is a survivor. It was taken care of by the Knight family for centuries, and then Sandy Lerner helped bring it forward into the 21st century. And Chawden House, as it stands today, is for me a symbol of hope and a symbol of surviving and a really inspirational place. After the harrowing operation, Papa was to be confined in bed for four days. He was to speak and be spoken to as little as possible. As I spent these silent days tending to my sightless father, I began work on a new novel about a young governess named Jane Eyre. And it's the fiction in the magazine, primarily, that gives us the missing link in the Jane Austen chain and proves that she read it and was familiar with the magazine and that she was familiar with it long before this particular piece, an account of the trial of Jane Austen's aunt, Mrs Lee Perrott, uh, appeared in the April 1800 issue. Uh, Mrs Lee Perrott uh, was tried at the Taunton Assizes for stealing a card of lace from the haberdasher Elizabeth Gregory, of which she was speedily acquitted, much to the relief of Mrs Lee Perrott and all the outraged readers of the ladies' magazine. I didn't even realize that I was rewriting the famous story of Lizzie Bennet and Mr. Darcy until my fourth or fifth draft when a fellow writer friend pointed it out to me. Uh, and I think it just speaks to the power of the stories that you read when you're young uh, and the way that the really important ones stick with you for the rest of your life. One of the object lessons uniquely illustrated by cheap 20th century reprints is that consuming a Jane Austen novel in translation was often a quirky local affair. Now, this observation is not intuitive, since the 20th century popularity of Austen's novels in French, Italian, or Spanish attest first and foremost to the author's celebrated universality. And lots of